I can tell you. All right, guys. Man, can you shut that door for me? Thank you. Okay, so before we get to this, I'm going to give you your quiz back real quickly. Uh, I thought most of y'all did pretty well. If your score, when you looked at it, preacher at first, hopefully you know that it was out of 55, right? So if you saw like 52, what? Uh, I was wondering if that's why you came running in here. Me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're like, can I see what I mean? Um, anyway, if you're way in the back, if you can run up here and grab this. Mine gets a little bit messy sometimes. Not that bad. Sorry, they're all. Uh, you got B. They're all odd. You could look at just the positive terms, which would be one, five, nine, all the way through twenty-one, and you, twenty, twenty-one, and you could add those up because it's an arithmetic sum. And then you can look at just the negative terms, which are negative three, negative seven, negative nine, all the way through negative twenty nineteen. And you could do that, and when you add those up, you get a thousand eleven. Um, or you could notice that the first two. Like first and the second added together give me negative two, third and fourth give me negative two. If they all give me negative two, but I end in a positive one, and I've been adding positive negative, positive negative, I can figure out how many total numbers I have, which are at, what a thousand eleven, and so if I eliminate that two thousand twenty one, that's a thousand and ten terms, that would be five hundred and five pairs of negative two, plus the last one twenty twenty one. That too gives me 10, 11. And the other test was almost the same thing. I, I did the same question with even numbers. So there were actually 500, I'm sorry, 1,011 terms there as well. So, but on this, on that particular one, yeah, you had to eliminate the 2022 because you're adding uh, plus minus, plus minus, and you had an extra plus. So if you add up the 505 pairs of negative two, and tack on an extra 2022 this time, you ended up with 1,012. Oh, 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 I got you. I got you. Yeah. Oh, A number 11? A number 11. That was the one that had the two geometric sums woven together. So you had to just look at the one half, one fourth, one eighth which is a geometric sum, first term a half, one minus a half on the bottom, and then the one-third, one-six, one-twelfth, also geometric, one-third on the top, one minus a half on the bottom. So you get a half over a half, which is one, a third over a half, which is two-thirds, and you add a half and a two-thirds together and get five-thirds. 
Yep. What was the answer for the bonus on this On A, it was 1012. On B, it was 1011. Anybody else? Overall, I thought pretty good. Most averages maybe bumped a little bit. All right. We get those four on you, and then let's jump into some fun. Math oh, team fun. Oh, oh, oh. See, I said something about math team stuff, and a couple of y'all groaned, but you do realize that this quiz was just math team stuff. What? Yeah, these these are all like math team kind of questions. You, a regular, if you were to go to a regular algebra two teacher and ask her how to do these, I would say the vast majority of them would have no idea. Right. Because it's just not an Algebra 2 topic. It just shows up on Algebra 2 tests. I know that doesn't sound logical. Um, I mean, why would they put it on there if it's not Algebra 2? But that's the question. Okay. Um, but that's uh, just very common. It's less horrible as it used to be, but it's still pretty common. So we're going to do just a little bit more of this. So I, I normally put all my math team topics in my third book, but I yanked it out and created a new book of math team miscellaneous. Now, this is not really a book, but these are the topics we're going to cover. Um, I will uh, probably not be able to get to all of these, because we really only have three days, today and then Monday, Tuesday. And then I'm going to give you a quiz on Wednesday, and then we start reviewing from Saints. So we'll do whatever we can do in three days, and then we'll just have a little mini quiz over it that probably won't last the whole period. So you'll actually probably get about three and a half days of uh, exam review. And does everybody have an exam review packet? I'm certainly hoping. Okay. Um, so all right, here. So jump to this first part, and let's start talking about it. And most of these things um, that we have here have good notes, and um, you can probably learn it on your own. So there's a lot of writing. Um, the first one is one of my favorite things called modular arithmetic. Yeah. Give us Just Does everybody have math team missed except him? Everybody has math team missed? You have. Odd. Does everybody else have math team missed? If you don't, then you're going to have a lovely uh, lecture on differential equations, which probably not quite ready for. Um, certainly smart enough for, you're going to think calculus, if you take AB, you will think it's easier than this class. That I'll promise you. Because everybody in here, would, if you take AB, well, literally, you'll have a better average and it'll be, you'll be like, I hardly do anything. I just pay attention and do a little homework occasionally. You know? Um, this is just a much more difficult class considering where you're coming from. But um, anyway, we'll see. So modular arithmetic, another topic that shows up in, um, in an Algebra 2 test that my son, as an actuarial senior graduating in eight days, is taking a class on number theory. So fourth year of college in actuarial math, and he's taking number theory. This is a number theory topic. Why it shows up in Algebra 2 and pre-cal and comprehensive tests, I have no idea. Doesn't mean it's overly hard, but it is something that shows up. So what I'm going to do is show you kind of a a poor man's way to go about doing this modular arithmetic stuff. Okay, so I'm going to describe it, briefly show you some strategies, but I'm not going to go into the why. The why, to be totally honest with you, I probably have to go dig up some of my notes because there's a couple of little, little theorems I'm using in here that I don't really know why they were discovered or how Euler came up with them. Um, but I'm going to show you this process and how you can do it. And by the way, when I'm showing the work, you're going to see me using this little mod expression and this funny little equal sign that has three lines. A lot of times, problems that you that you see won't even look like that. All right, they'll just ask you the question that it means. Okay. So this whole lesson is about modular arithmetic or just mods, and it is a branch of number theory. And number theory is kind of saying. Okay, even though I probably can't do the work, if I can understand some patterns, I might be able to answer your question. 
For instance, what if I said, what if I take the number 11 and raise it to the zillionth power? Like, I mean, zillion is not a number. To the one billionth power. Do you know what that number is? Can your calculator tell you what that number is? Too big. Literally, it just explodes and goes, uh, it says error or something like that. Or, or what can they say now? If I said overfill error, it might say something like that. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, if I said billion, overflow, okay. It says error, overflow, and then I hit okay to get it off that. So, point is, you can't do that. But think about the question again 11 raised to the billion. What's in the units digit? So you know that. That's number theory. That's being able to answer certain questions. Now, I know that because every time I raise 11 to a power, I'm going 11 times 11, and that first thing I write is a 1, right? I multiply another 11, 11 and those 1s get multiplied. Well, there's number theory for how to tell if it's not 1. What if it's 12 raised to a power or 15 raised to a power? Those kinds of things I can find with number theory. Well, this kind of number theory with mods has to do with remainders. Now, I'll need to lock in here. This is not what you want to miss. You're not going to find this anywhere else, except repeating on a video. So when you see an, an expression like this, this is what it's saying. This is saying, hey, this is a huge number. I want to know what is the remainder when I divide that number by 13. That's what it's saying. And your answer will be the x. So you are trying to solve for x here, okay? Now, there's going to be some strategies that we use. But more than likely, every single one of you, when you show your work, even if everyone comes up with the same answer, you're going to be doing this with different strategies. Now, sometimes when the number's really basic, maybe not. But like more than likely, every single one of you, your work's going to be different. So when you go to check your answers and it's wrong, it doesn't mean you're completely wrong. You might have made a little, a little algebra error, a little division error, a little multiplication error, something like that. But, um, but the processes are, are varied. Okay. So we're going to start kind of basic. Clearly, I cannot divide 2,345 raised to the 1,234 power by 13 because that number is so big I don't know what it is. And even if I did know, do I really want to divide 13 into some 100-digit number? No. So I'm going to process. So somebody somewhere started noticing patterns and the first pattern is this I, i'm what i'm going to be trying to do with all of these is shrink that number down using some clever little tricks shrink it down to a number that i can divide 13 into okay so there's a couple processes i'm going to use to go about that and that will get my number kind of small and then i'm just going to use creative algebra to repeat these processes over and over and over until I finally get down to a number smaller than 13. Because as soon as it's smaller than 13, I can't divide 13 in, right? And then I'll know my roommate. So here are the, then there's only a couple. Here are the things we're going to do. The first thing is I am allowed at any time to divide the base of that number. Okay, you can divide the base of that number, 2, 3, 4, 5, by 13 and replace it with the remainder. I'm allowed to do that. So I can come over there and divide 13 into 2,345. You're going to have to pull out your long division and be careful. And I divide it in there, and I get a remainder of 5. I'm going to cancel out the 2,345 and replace it with 5. And now I have a newer module. Now, anybody want to do 5 to the 1,234 power? Nor do I. So now I want to wait, but I can't get five really any smaller, all right? So what I'm going to do now is to say, can I shrink down the one, two, three, four? And this is where Euler comes in. Euler noticed a pattern, and he calls it this phi number. And by the way, it's good to know a phi number because that was a ciphering question a couple years ago. It said, what is the, I think the question was, what is phi of 100? And if you're like, what the heck is phi of 100? Now you know. So, and I'll show you a little, ah, I forgot this trick too, but I'll, I'll, I'll go dig up what this little trick is to show you how to do them um, when they get really big. But right here, uh, the second trick you're going to use is to shrink down the power is you are going to calculate phi of 13, and, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to take that number, divide it into the 1, 2, 3, 4, 
and whatever that remainder is, replace the one, two, three, four with it. And at that point, you will have shrunken down the base to a number between zero and 13 and the power to a number between zero and 13 because you're taking remainders, right? And they're smaller than 13. And at that point, you'll have it small enough we can start playing with it, cleaning it up. So what is a phi number? So the definition of a phi of something, okay, and phi is the lowercase Greek letter phi. The definition of phi of something is this. All the numbers smaller than that number, sorry, let me say, let me say that. All of the positive numbers smaller than that number that are relatively prime with that number. Now, what does relatively prime mean? It means they share no common factor other than one. So of all the numbers smaller than 13 that are positive, one through 12, how many of them share another common factor other than one? None. So that's great if they give you a prime number, you can just say one less. If I said five, seven, it's prime, right? So every number smaller than it is not going to have a, a, a shared factor other than one, so there's six. I said five, 11, it's 10. Five, 23, 22, because they're prime numbers, yes? So if I ask phi of 13, what are the factors of 13? Uh, 1 and 13. So do these any of these numbers have a factor uh, other than 1 that this has? No. Think of it like a fraction. If I put 13 over any one of these, would they produce? If it did reduce, then throw out that number. So basically, you're counting the numbers that don't have any common factor with 13. Now, they all have a common factor of 1, so don't throw out all of them because of the one. It's any other common factor other than one. And we'll do one of those where it's like five eight or five ten, and you'll see me canceling out the ones. So after you've canceled everything out that does share a common factor, you count them up, and that's what your five number is. So since my five thirteen in this case was twelve, I take twelve, I long divide it into one, two, three, four, and I get a remainder of ten. So I replace the one, two, three, four with ten. Now I don't have five raised to the tenth memorized in my head. I got five to the sixth. What did I ask y'all to go to? Did we go to the eighth or the sixth? Six. Just the sixth? So I guess if you wanted to, you could change five to the ten into five to the sixth and five to the fourth, right? Or five to the fifth and five to the fifth. You could do any number of things and then divide, uh, and then, sorry, at this, this point it becomes more manageable. If I really was a sucker for punishment, I could take five to the fifth and five to the fifth, boil them out, get a really big number over a million, maybe nine million, whatever it is, and then divide 12 into that. Because again, remember what the rule is? If there's a base out there, if I rewrote that as a really big number, that really big number is now my base, isn't it? And I'm always allowed to divide the base by what? 13. But I don't like finding a big giant number and then dividing the number in. So what I'm gonna do is break this up into a bunch of bases. Smaller numbers that make it easier for me to divide 13 into them. So here's one random way to do it. Here's my five to the 10. And remember, I can always divide a base here by 13. So what if I, and this is me just being random. Isn't five to the 10th the same thing as five squared, that's two fives, times five to the fourth squared, that's eight fives? Doesn't that end up being 10 fives? Okay, this is just, again, one way to do it. And isn't five to the fourth, 625? And isn't five squared, 25? Now, I didn't really want to do uh, 625 squared. That's a huge number. So I just chose right now, those are bases. I can divide them by 13. Now, what happens if I divide 25 by 13? It goes in there once with the remainder of, well, sorry, replace the 25 with the 12. Guess what happens when you divide 625 by 13? You get a remainder of 1. That was awesome. So I got a remainder of 1, bring down the 2, and what do I have left? Well, I just happen to be done on this one because as soon as the number is smaller than 13, I can't divide it in there. The remainder is always going to be 12. This is one example. So it turns out that this number right here, right here, when you divide it by 13, will have a remainder of 12. Y'all seeing this? 
Now, I'm not asking you, do you understand the why? If this was a why, I would be developing this over the course of a week, okay? I'm just jumping straight to the how, all right? Number theory is the proof of all this and all of the explanations as to why these things work would have had to have been developed in a proof class. Like, that's what my son's taking, and he probably spent a week doing this modulo stuff. Um, we're just going to jump into answers. All right, now, one more thing that's something that you can do, and sometimes this is really great. Isn't dividing by 12, like, take a look at this. Isn't dividing 12, check it out, come on. I'm going to divide 12 into 25, and I'm going to be creative with it. 12 into 25, how many times does it go? Could go twice. If it went twice, it gives me a remainder of 1, right? Isn't that the same thing as taking 25 and subtracting 12 twice? Okay, couldn't I have also said this? How many times does 12 go into 25? Couldn't I have said once with the remainder of 13? I could. I don't want to do that, right? Because who wants to write my answer? Yeah, my answer is 1 and 13 twelfths. Well, if you really think about it, isn't 1 and 13 twelfths the same thing as 2 and 1 twelfth? I wouldn't do that because that's not how we typically divide. But the point is, don't I get 13 by going 25 minus 12? Just like I did this, 25 minus 12 minus 12. So another way of shrinking down that base number, despite dividing and keeping a remainder, is you could also just subtract the number as many times as you want. Now you might go, well, why is that helpful? Go back here. Right here with this 25. And by the way, if I'm allowed to subtract, I could also add. And you might go, well, why would I want to add? Right here. Couldn't I right there on that 25 have said, I could have just subtracted 13 and gotten 12 that way? Right? Now the reason why that's helpful is every now and then you run into a situation like this. You might end up with something like, well, I got down to, like, let's just say you got this thing simplified and you ended up with 25 to the 17th power, and you're doing this mod problem. And you're like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's something like that. And um, I don't know. Let's just say we're doing that for some reason. I could, no, even better. I'll go back to that 13. Let's just say I got down to something like this. Not only can I divide and keep a remainder, but to divide and keep a remainder, look what happens. 13 goes into 25. Wouldn't all of you have done that? Right? I mean, and if you did, isn't this still a really big number to deal with? Well, check this out. What if I instead, with this 25, subtracted 13 twice? What do I get? What's negative 1 to the 17th? Now I'm just bringing this stuff down. And can't I add or subtract 13 any, any, any time I want? Done. So sometimes adding and subtracting and venturing into the negatives sometimes is really great because a, neg a really small number like that is a whole lot better than dealing with the 12. So we're going to do a bunch of these in class. Your job is to finish up anything we don't get to. But I'm hoping by after we do six or seven of these, you'll start getting into a routine. So let's just jump to um, let's just jump to some of these problems and see what happens. So what is the remainder when that number is divided by 17? So how do I set that up to look like a mod problem? So 2, 3, 4, sorry, 2, 3, 4, 5, raised to the 1, 2, 3, 4 is equivalent. So you have this equivalence relation expression to x mod 17. That's what this means right here. Now, what are your two things you can do to immediately get yourself in a good spot? Divide that by 17. So I'm going to come over here to the side. 17 into 2345. 17 into that goes 3 times 51. 17 goes into 135. 
decent amount. I'm going to go with seven. And I get a remainder of 16, right? So right here, let's see if you can see a little trick. I can replace that with 16. And a sucker would do what? Try and raise it or go to your next step and figure out how to divide one, two, three, four, which you can do. But if somebody was really on their game, they'd go, wait a second. What if I subtracted 17? What does that give me? Which is one. And the second that number is positive but smaller than 17, can I get it? I mean, that would be the remainder, wouldn't it? And I'm done. Now, if you don't see that, well, then you would have to now find the what? The phi number. So the phi number of 17 is all the numbers smaller than 16. Are any of them, do any of them have a common factor with 17 other than one? No. So how many of them are there? 16. And again, hopefully you know that anytime I have phi prime, it's one less. So I can divide 16 into the power. So 16 goes into that, goes into 12, none. Goes into the other one, what? A good many. So seven, remainder of 11, that into that goes seven again. Tell me if I make a mistake. Did y'all get that? If I make a mistake, tell me. I mean, if it is, it's careless. The concepts are okay. So anyway, so remainder of two, so I can replace that with a two. And look, at this point, I should be on my way, right? Because even if you have to multiply it out, isn't 16 2 to the 4th? What's 2 fourth to the 2 to the 4th squared? 2 to the 8? What's 2 to the 8? So I can now rewrite that again if I had to and divide 17. Now it's a base again, right? Divide 17 into 256. It goes once. Uh... Five, and there's my remainder of one, again, which is what I knew the other time, except I saved myself a lot of trouble by changing that to a negative one, didn't I? Because I can do that. Those are the three rules I kind of have to help myself out. You with me so far? All right, let's try something different. What about jump to, and I, I can come back and do some of these. What about jump to number five? What is the remainder when 20 to the 97th? So here we go. 20. <sighs> 20 to the 97th is divided by 8. So x would be the answer. But what am I, what am, what is my remainder? So what can I do immediately? Divide 8 into 20 and take the remainder. The remainder would be 4. So I have now 4 to the 97th. And before I even write 97, how could, well, I'll go ahead and write it. Now, how do I shrink down the 97? Okay, so let's look at this phi of 8. Phi, and maybe it is the uppercase, but whatever, upper or lower. Phi of 8 means how many numbers smaller than 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. How many of those that are positive and smaller do not share a common factor. Well, seven doesn't share a common factor, but six does, it shares a two. Five doesn't share a common factor, but four does, it shares a two. Three doesn't share a common factor, but two does, it shares a two, and one doesn't. So what's five, eight? Four, the one, the three, the five, and the seven. Those are the four numbers that are positive, smaller than eight, that are relatively prime with eight. And again, if I put an eight over all of those, could I reduce any? So it's not the ones you cancel, it's the ones that don't share a common factor. I cancel out the ones that do share a common factor. So if my 5 8 is 4, I can divide 4 into 97. And when I divide 4 into 97, it goes 4 into 97. Four. Right? Yeah, it goes. Am 
under a one. So I can replace the 97 with a one. And is it four to the one, my uh, smaller than eight? So four would be my remainder. Not too bad? Okay. Uh, and I'm pretty confident nobody in the building knows what the heck this is, but me and you and some pre calc some maybe a couple seniors that remember it, from whatever. This is not a topic you learn in high school unless you're in some mathing class, but it shows up probably every year at a state tournament all the time at the stadium and Hoover because people don't learn it, and that's just an easy way to stick it to you, which is what they're always trying to do at those tournaments, but not us. Now, they can get a little clever sometimes, so check out Number 12, what is the remainder when 12 factorial is divided by 17? No, sorry, number four. <laughs> what, is the, uh, what is the remainder when 12 factorial is divided by 17? Now, you might look at that and go, but wait, 12 factorial is a base, and it's already smaller. True, but it's not 12. It's 12 factorial. And 12 factorial is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Anybody got any ideas? And I'll do what you said. Okay, so maybe multiply a couple numbers together. And make them bigger than 17 so you can divide 17 in. So, like right here, if I multiplied, say, 3 and 12 together, what would that give me? So, I technically have a times 36. Could I divide 12 into 36? What would be my remainder? Zero? Sorry, thank you. Divide 17 to 36, what's my remainder? Two, so I can replace that, and I'm going to put a two down here. Now let's keep doing that, all right? What if I put uh, four and 10 together? Four and 10 would give me what? A 40. If I divide 17 into that base, it goes twice, remainder of 34, what's my remainder? Six, right? Replace that with a times six. Is that right? Or just subtract seven, 17 twice. You're subtracting 34 and you get a six. All right, what if I took the, uh, the 5 and the 6, that's a 30. If I divide 17 to that, what's the remainder? Remainder. 13, while I still have that 13, what if I put 13 with the 2? That's 26. What happens if I subtract the 17 from that 26? 9, I'm going to put the 9 down there. And I'm just going to keep doing that. What about 7 and 8? That's a 56. If I divide 17 into 56, what happens? Remainder of 5? Put a 5 down there for that. Last one, 9 and 11. 17 into 99 goes what? 5, 85, 14, remainder 14. I put the 14 down. Now, I guarantee you my work and your work is not going to match on this problem because we're not going to pair the same numbers together. It's not going to look the same to the end, but am I done? So what can I do here? I can do it some more. And keep in mind, if you're clever about the way you look at numbers, sometimes you can shorten the process. Like I love if I can take something and get like the 5 and the 7 to me would have been a great pair to put together because that's 35. And subtract 17 twice, 1. So I like stuff like that. I don't have that. Well, I kind of have it. Look at this, four, this 14 has a 7 in it, right? If you want to split that up and go 2 times 7. But what if I take this what? 70. I divide 17 into that 70, it goes what? Four, remainder of two. And if I take that, what, 54? I'm just going to drop this two down. 54, divide that by 17, three times, remainder of three. And all of a sudden, I got down to what? Which is 12. Is 12 smaller than 17? Then I'm done. No. Now, you want to know a great ciphering question? What if I gave you this? 
<laughs> what if I gave you this? This is a ciphering question all day long. What is the remainder? So you can get it. When 21 factorial is divided by 17. <laughs> Say it out loud. Yeah. I'm done. Wait, what? Well, you need the question uh, number four, like 12. Zero, why? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Gosh, what's, what's in 21 factorial? 17. There's a 17 in there. If there's a 17 in there, and I divide into 17, I'm going to get a zero. Does the rest of that matter if I multiply by zero? Oh. It's bigger. Yeah. Any factorial bigger than or equal to that, it's always going to end up being zero. Great little ciphering question. And you know what you see all the time? You see these people busily going away, trying to get done in two minutes. This, and a lot of times they give you a massive number. They'll make that like. 2021 factorial <laughs> divided by 1000 factorial, and people are like, or divided by 1000 people. <laughs> right? And then, you, of course, to the stated kids, like, <laughs> okay, hopefully that'll be us too. But that's a kind of a problem that you sometimes see. Um, now, what about this? This is kind of a clever way of asking a question. What are the last two digits of that? Whoa. Now, we'll actually, I think if we have time, if not now, we'll do it before the state tournament. But we'll actually spend time finding our units digits. You might already have learned that, but we'll go back over that if we have. If you have. But the last two digits, I remember trying to sit down and notice patterns. And I would notice a pattern. And it might take me five or six minutes to see the pattern, and then I could apply it, but we often don't have five or six minutes, right? And the pattern with twos was different than the pattern when you have like a number with the two or a number with the three, finding the last two digits was kind of tricky until I thought, wait a second. What happens if I take a number like, if I take a number like uh, eight, nine, three, four, six, two, and I divide by a hundred? Well, check it out. What's my remainder? Okay, so if I wanted to find the last two digits of a number, it's easy when I'm looking at the number, I can go, oh, they're right there, right? <laughs> but when I don't know what the number is, I could still divide it by the 100 and get the remainder. That's number theory, right? Like if I said, what are the last two digits when I'm dividing by 100, you take the last two. I'm sorry, if I said, what are the last two digits, you take the last two. But I get those last two when I divide by 100. If I said, what are the last three digits? Well, here I would just look at the last three. But if I didn't know the number, I could divide by 1,000. So because I have no idea what this looks like, I can't just look at it and grab the last two, can I? I have no idea what that is. However, I can divide that by 100 because I know number theory. So when I do this, this is essentially saying find the remainder that you get when you divide by 100. But I just learned that dividing by 100 gives me the last two digits as a remainder. Well, that's huge for us. So now we can do a problem like this. Now, there's one problem that you run into. The first thing is easy. You go, hey, well, what happens when I divide 100 into that? Anybody got a guess? You get 88. So that part's awesome. In fact, if you're really on the grip game, what could you do right after you write 88? Ah, you could subtract 100. And what does that get you to? Negative 12. And what's negative 12 to an even power? A positive 12. So that was huge. I just went from 88, which is a terrible number. I subtracted a number, got a negative. An even number of negatives is positive. Well, awesome. I've already really done some great work. I'm going to put that 12 back there. Now, here's the problem we run into. Y'all see it? Finding the five number. Now, two years ago, Gabe uh, Keanu uh, found a trick somewhere online about finding the five number of big numbers, and I wrote it down when I forgot it. 
totally, I mean, I've totally forgotten it, but I, it's something about doing prime factorizations and this little clever trick and it gets you somewhere. But let me just show you for these, this is something you just good to know. 510, if you did it, would be 4. Guess what 500 is? 40. Guess what 5,000 is? 400. 400. Just knowing that is helpful. In fact, three years ago, Eric Hepp was at a tournament, sent him up there to cipher. He missed every problem. Fifth question, what's 500? He's like, 40. We had just talked about it the day before, but said, kind of like right where we are now. And he just remembered that. Great thing to know because I'm about to have to shrink down 2008, right? And how do I shrink down exponents? I need the phi number. Well, I certainly don't want to write out all the numbers between 1 and 99 and start canceling anything that has a 2 and a 5 in it and then count them up. That takes me, I'm, now I've run out of ciphering time. What's my? Okay. You look like you had a question. Um, so I've already shrunk that down. Remember, if you missed that process, I divided 100 in there and got 88. I subtracted 100 and got negative 12, but any number to an even power becomes a positive. So that's where I am right this second. Now I'm going to divide 2008 by 40 because that's my phi number. I didn't need these in this problem. But how many times does that go in there? If I did, I could go 5, right, with a 0, and then none. So remainder of 8. Right? So all of a sudden, I'm shr I've shrunk it down to 12 to the 8th. Now, that's huge for me. Now, I still have some work to do, and these really big mod numbers are tricky sometimes, but let's slow it down. What is something you could do to make my base bigger other than going 12 to the 8th, which I don't know? Do what? 1.44. Say 1.4 to the 144. Okay, so she's saying, I'm going to come over here. She's saying, why don't you do 12 squared to the fourth? That's a great idea. What other, we'll just do that. So 12 squared is 144 to the fourth power. Isn't that a new base? Can't I subtract what from it? A 100? So now aren't I instantly, when I subtract 100, at 44 to the fourth? Are you tracking with me? Now what can I do? You could. You could say 44 squared. Or how about 44 squared, 44 squared? Since I might as well, right? There's four of them. And what's 44 squared? I don't know, but I can find it. So 16, 17, 176, 6, 9, 1936 times the 1936, I'm getting a little sloppy here because I'm not putting all my little equivalent signs. Are you tra tracking with me? Now, if, aren't those new bases? If I divide hundreds into those, what do I have left? 36s? So I'm going to erase this now. So now aren't I to 36 times 36? And can't you do that and create a new bigger base? So what's 36 times 36? Did I ask you to learn powers of six? No, I didn't. I did not? Okay. So 36 times 36, or if you know six to the four. So 36, 216, uh, 108-6921. So if that's 1296, it's a new base. What can you do? Divide by 100 and keep the remainder. Now that's not super easy. There was actually a ciphering problem at Hoover once, and it was find the last three digits. So you have to divide by a thousand. And I started doing the problem with the calculator. And about 15 minutes in, I was finished. I'm like, this is a ciphering question. I was like, man, what do I not know? So I emailed this guy over at Hoover, who's now at Mountain Burke. He's got his doctorate in math, he's brilliant. And I said, How did you do this? What I should have said is, how do you do it so quickly? And he wrote me back a little summary of how to do mods and i was like i know how to do mods but how did you get this done this was a ciphering problem on your test he goes oh my bad sue me that was his response so i'm guessing nobody got it on if it was a ciphering question because there's no way wait I, I, got it. I, know, I know and i did go back and look and the ciphering scores were really low that year um so probably nobody did get it. 
Hey, do what you can on the number theory stuff. See if you can finish it up. We'll have a QA real quick before we get to the next topic on Monday. Y'all have a great weekend. No doubt. I will. 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 I